She had fully gotten used to socialising with and touching humans, and she was now willing to do these things for enjoyment. She was ac Now she actually enjoyed sitting on people's laps. It reached the point where if anyone ever decided to come into the lounge room and sit down, they would almost guarantee that Ming would sit down on their lap and demand to be pat, and demand pats. Another revelation for Ming was realising that coming into bed at night and sleeping next to a human body was a great way of staying warm, to the point where during the winter nights she would sleep in or on one of our beds every single night. Over the years, Ming had many favourite spots around the house to nap. There were the back seats on sorry, there were the back seats on the dining room table, the arms and heads of the two couches, and of course Jackson's pillow. That's right, nothing would stop Ming from getting to that pillow, no matter what tricks he employed. For a period of about a year, Ming had this quirky habit of wanting, to rick up, of wanting to rip up all the paper she could get her hands on. She would just approach any paper within her reach, and without thinking or second guessing, she would start tearing it apart. It reached the point where we had to institute a family rule that there could be no unsupervised paper left out in the open. But then, just as quickly as the habit arose, it soon disappeared, and Ming would then just leave alone, and then Ming would just as well leave alone all the paper left out in the open, almost as if she never had shown any interest in it, ever. For a cat, Ming had one of the strangest tastes in food, and there was seemingly no pattern or logic to any of it. There were some circumstances where she... There were some circumstances where she... Where, where she would eat a certain type of meat, but other circumstances where she wouldn't, perhaps depending upon the cooking style or the sauce used. Sometimes she would get. Sorry, sometimes she would give a piece of food a sniff and just walk away, and other times she would chew into it and not swallow, and the food would just fall out of her mouth and onto the floor and making a big mess. And on the other hand. There were all of these non-meat foods that she really enjoyed eating, where as soon as she caught a smell of, where as soon as she caught a smell of them, she would instantly go over to whoever was cooking and ask for some. These included cheese, margarine, and amazingly, oven-heated chips. And when it came to non-meat foods in general, she was just naturally curious about them wanting to look at them and sniff at them, and maybe give them a bit of a taste to see how they're like. And let's not forget about that special, if but mostly secret, relationship that existed between Ming and Mum. Those two had a routine when they had the house together to themselves. In the mornings would be Mum's coffee and reading outdoors, and Ming would always be nearby enough, and Ming would always be nearby enough so that they could share a nice moment, while not getting too close as to interfere with what Mum was doing. And then, in the afternoon, Mum would go back inside for lunch, nap on the couch and watching some TV, and Ming would join her, and maybe share in some of that lunch, if it was to her liking. Her relationship with Mum might be the most understated, but nonetheless important parts of Ming's life. A couple of years ago, in the middle of the night when everyone else was asleep, this random neighbourhood cat was jumping up onto the windowsill and through the window and getting inside our house. Each night that this happened would vary, as on some occasions they would simply go into the laundry, eat some of Ming's food and then leave, and then other times they would get into a fight with Ming, with the two cats chasing and screaming at each other. So we made the decision that during the night time, Ming would be an indoor-only cat. From about 11 o'clock at night until 7 o'clock in the morning, the window, would remain, the window would remain closed and Ming would stay inside. This meant that we needed to have a kitty litter system in place, 
so Ming had somewhere to go to the toilet overnight. For the most part, she did take to this new system, even if her aim didn't. I have spent so much time alone with Ming over these past ten years, so it feels incredibly unsettling to have her gone all of a sudden. For countless hundreds of occasions, I would be sitting at my desk, working late into the night on some project, and Ming would be there nearby, either sitting on my lap or sleeping on my pillow. She was always there nearby, offering me company, asking me to share in some of my food, and wanting to get some pats, but never too far away. Over the years, I spent a lot of time digitally documenting Ming's everyday behaviour and activities, walking around the backyard, sitting on the couch, eating her dinner, running around the kitchen asking to get fed, and then I would publish that material onto the internet. Although most of that work seemed very silly at the time, there exists today over 60 videos and just short of a thousand photos of Ming, so we have ample documentation of who she was what she looked like, what her voice sounded like, and what her casual, everyday personality was like. Right up until the very last day that she was with us, Ming was living an active and happy life. She was eating her canned dinner at night and her cat biscuit snacks during the day. During the warmer weather, she would go outside and sit in the grass, and when it got colder, she would go back inside and sleep on either my bed or the couch. Every night, she continued to sleep in bed with me, under the covers, curled up into my chest, with her front paws and chin resting upon the bicep of my mattress-adjacent arm. Since losing Ming, the first thing that I noticed about what has changed is all of the little things. When I'm going about my daily routine throughout the house, there's dozens of little things that I used to do because of Ming. <coughs> there's dozens of things that I used to do because of Ming. When I'm grating cheese, leave a little on the windowsill for her to eat too. When I go into my room, Leave the door slightly ajar so that she could come in and see me if she wanted. When I go to place something on my bed, make sure that she's not as asleep under the duna covers so that I don't hurt her. Making sure that there's biscuits by her bowl for her to eat and milk in her saucer to drink. And now, I'm coming to the realisation that I don't need to do any of them anymore and it fills me with such melancholy and somberness. So much of my domestic life, on a normal hour-to-hour -hour routine, no longer has the same purpose or meaning, and it all seems so pointless and unimportant now. And then, a few thoughts later, as the full weight and consequence of all those little things begins to bear itself down on my mind, I move on to thinking about the big things. I then realised just how much of a loss this actually is. I personally have had Ming for a majority of my life. We adopted her when I was just 13, and we have had her, we had had her, for 15 and a half years. For so much of that time, she has played such an important role in my life, being a companion and confidant a welcoming face to come home to at the end of a long day, someone, someone non-judgmental and patient whom could be confided in, a friendly personality who will come and cuddle with you when you seem lonely. This gigantic gap that Ming has left in all our hearts is testimony to the immense role she played in her in the immense role she played in our lives. We will not forget her easily. She has made such a tremendous contribution to our lives, to this family, to our household, that life will never be the same without her.